Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to discuss perfect complements, so how we understand the utility function, the diagram, and how to solve for the optimal bundle of consumption. The contents are in the description if you want to skip to any particular part. Otherwise, I'm just going to start with our indifference curves. This is how indifference curves for perfect complements look. They are L-shaped, they go from vertical to horizontal, and there's just one point, a corner point, where we get a sharp change in the direction of the curve. Now, these sorts of indifference curves are appropriate when our consumers are consuming the goods that they're interested in in very specific proportions. So a very common example would be left shoes and right shoes. Typically consumers will consume left shoes and right shoes in a one-to-one -one ratio. It's a very specific ratio. For my diagram, I'm just going to use an abstract good X on the horizontal and Y on the vertical. And I'll put some numbers in on our axes and we'll see in a minute, but I've drawn these in difference curves. So we're not consuming X and Y in a one-to-one -one ratio like the shoes. So I'll take the shoes away. Actually, we would interpret these curves as follows. So like usual, each indifference curve corresponds to a different level of utility. The higher the indifference curve, the higher the utility obtained. And the bundles along each curve all correspond to the same level of utility. So utility remains constant along each individual indifference curve. So at each point along this curve, for instance, I'll just focus on IC1, indifference curve 1. If we went from a point like A, for instance, and at A we're consuming 1x and 2y, and we moved to point B, where x is still 1, but now y is equal to 4, our consumer would get exactly the same level of utility from either bundle because we are on the same indifference curve. And so interestingly, we see from this example that we've added two additional units of y. We moved from 2y to 4y, but those additional y did not increase the consumer's level of utility. And this makes sense because as we said before, we're dealing with perfect complements. Our consumer only cares about consuming x and y in very specific proportions. So when we're holding x fixed equal to one and we're adding more y, those additional y's are not doing anything for our consumer unless we add more x as well to meet those extra Y's so they can be consumed together in the right proportion. And that will be true if we're moving along the horizontal part of our indifference curve as well. So if we went from point A, where again, X is equal to one and Y is equal to two, to a point like C, where we've added one X, but we've held Y fixed at two, you can see that addition of X has not moved us to a higher level of utility. We're still on the same indifference curve, our consumer is completely indifferent between bundle A and bundle C. And so then hopefully you can see that reading our indifference curves, the straight lines coming out from the corner of our L shapes, they kind of represent these levels of consumption where we have an additional or extra Y or extra X that has not improved our consumer's utility. And hopefully you can also appreciate that our consumer will be making their choice with a limited budget. And so our optimal point of consumption will be where our consumer is definitely not spending any money on X or Y that doesn't improve their utility. That would be a waste. So it follows that our optimal bundle will not be on any of the straight sections of our indifference curves. It will be on one of the corners, one of the red points that I have here. Moreover to this, the corner points will be able to tell us about the proportions that our consumer prefers. So if we look at the corner of IC1, for instance, at that point, our consumer consumes 2y and 1x. So that's point one, two. If we look at the corner of IC3, that corresponds to where our consumer consumes 2x and 4y, so 0.24. And hopefully you can see then by looking at those corners that our consumer really prefers to consume two units of Y for every one unit of, of X. That's the ratio that describes the corner points on these indifference curves here. Now, which corner we actually end up on will depend on the budget constraint. If the budget lies here, for instance, it will be this, this first point, or if our budget constraint is further up, it will be on IC3, it will be that corner. We'll bring the budget constraint into the mix in a second, 
First though, algebraically, we're going to describe these sorts of preferences using what is called the min function. And so the utility function u is equal to the minimum of x comma half y is actually the function that describes these curves that I've drawn here. Now with our min function, the function itself just means, well, the level of utility u that our consumer gets is equal to the smallest of the two numbers in the brackets in our function. So for instance, let's think about point B, which we saw before, where y is equal to four and x is equal to one. We said that there was actually two more extra y here, which wasn't doing anything extra for our consumer's utility. Well, if we substitute these values into our min function, we see at this point, utility is equal to, well, x is one and y is four, so half times four, so min, open brackets one, two, and the minimum number is one, so our level of utility is one, the smallest number in our brackets. Now, just like visually, we saw that we had kind of two extra y here that wasn't being useful for our utility. You can see it's the extra y that is not useful, which is making the second number larger than the first number. And so you can see how the min function works. It's telling us that that extra y doesn't matter. We ignore it. The only thing that matters is the smaller of the number. So in general, then, if the number is in our function, once we substitute how many x we have and how many y we have, if they end up different, that's basically telling us that we have an extra of one of our goods that is not contributing to our consumer's utility. We're basically on that vertical section of our indifference curve or the horizontal section of our indifference curve. We are not squarely on the corner. And so we can conclude then that when our numbers in our min function are exactly equal to one another, it's at this point that actually corresponds to our corner points on our indifference curves. And that's exactly what we need for our optimal bundle. So for instance, let's take the corner point at point A where X is one and Y is two. So we'll substitute that into our function. So U is equal to the minimum of, well, X is one and Y is two, so min, one, one, and they're equal to one another. So this is telling us that we don't have any additional units of X and Y that is not doing anything for our utility. So the strategy then, when we're thinking about perfect complements and we have a min function, is that we're going to set each of the terms in the function equal to one another. So for our min function here, we're just going to say X is equal to half Y or alternatively, if we multiply both sides by two, two X is equal to Y. And this is just another way, well, this is the algebraic representation of what we saw before, that we consume two Y for every one X. We can then substitute that condition into our budget constraint, and that will tell us how much of each good that our consumer can afford, given that they are consuming the goods in question in that specific proportion that is defined by the min function. So for example, here for instance, let's just say our income M is equal to 100. The price of good X is 10. The price of good Y is five. So our budget constraint will be, well, M will be equal to the price of X times X plus the price of Y times Y. So substituting our values in, we get 100, that's our income, will be equal to 10, that's the price of X times X, plus five, that's the price of Y times Y. We then go to our condition that we found before. So two X is equal to Y. You could also substitute X is equal to half Y. It will come to the same conclusions, but I'm just going to use two X is equal to Y. So we substitute that into our budget constraint. So we get 100 is equal to 10 X plus five times. Well, Y is equal to two X. So five times two X, which is 10 X. 10 X plus 10 X is 20 X. So we have this condition that 100 is equal to 20 X. We can then divide both sides by 20. So 100 over 20 is five. So X star, the optimal consumption of X is equal to five. We can then put that X star back into our condition, Y is equal to two X. You could also put it back into the budget constraint, but I'll just put it back into our condition. So Y star, our optimal value will be equal to two times X evaluated at the optimal value of X, which is five. So two times five is 10 and that's Y star. 
So that's how we find the optimal values of our goods when we have perfect complements. And so that's it. I hope that this video helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. You can also visit my website now, www.econhelp.com.au for more resources to help you study and also to support the channel if you would like to. So thanks so much, guys. I hope you have a good one.